If dry January feels too intimidating, you can still enjoy the health benefits of alcohol related of this alcohol related challenge this month. It's called damp January. And instead of cutting out alcohol entirely, you just reduce the amount you're drinking. For more on cutting back drinks this month, I want to bring in Dr. Richard DeVisser. He's a professor of health psychology at Brighton and Sussex Medical School. Uh, doctor, thanks so much for joining us. Um, all right. I mean, I, get, I, I think I understand the concept, right? But what does a successful damp January look like and how much should people be cutting back? Well, it's really up to the individual. So what success means is cutting down in some way. So people want to drink on fewer days or if they want to drink fewer drinks on the days when they do drink, uh, it's really up to them. But it's, it's basically trying to think of any way that people might feel that they can actually cut down on their drinking during the month. See, that's C. Okay. Um, All right. So we were talking about this earlier because I'm embarking on a dry January, except okay. my husband's birthday is right in the middle of January, and I, I feel compelled to have a single glass of champagne <laughs> on his behalf, though he's doing it with me. But so we'll see. It... I'll only do it if he's doing it. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. <laughs> so let me ask you, what, what are really the health benefits? So you're not cutting out alcohol at all. And by the way, uh -huh. one of our staff members cut out alcohol um, for several months. Uh -huh. I'll tell you who. And then? And I asked him, do you feel any better? And he said, not really. <laughs> not really. So tell me, what are the health benefits if people want to, you know, participate in a damp or a dry January? The health benefits of cutting back on your alcohol consumption. Yeah. Well, there, well, there's no guarantee, and I'm afraid it's unfortunate <laughs> to hear that your colleague didn't get those benefits. But what we find on average is that most people do say they notice that their sleep improves, they feel like their concentration is better because they're sleeping better. Um, around half the people lose weight, people say they save money, their skin looks and feels better as well. But And we find these benefits come from people who do the whole month of dry January, but we also see them for people who cut down their drinking for some of the month, either in, in your case about drinking, you know, cutting out drinking on most days except for a few, or in people who just cut down but don't make it through the whole month. So what we find is there's, there's definitely benefits from drinking less. If you can do the whole month, that's great. But if you can't, don't, you know, beat yourself up over not being able to do a whole month. Anything you can do to reduce your alcohol intake will make it more likely that you'll experience these health benefits. Yeah, and we should point out, I like look, that. I mean, we're having a little fun, and there are some people who are dealing with real addiction issues, uh, and of course we, we take note of that. Um, yeah. But I've also found, because because um, when Mary and my wife uh, was pregnant, and even now when she's breastfeeding, she uh, decided, and my wife likes a good cocktail at the end of the day, right, <laughs> that we sometimes make ourselves in the house, but there are now a number of companies that are coming out with um, uh, non-alcoholic yeah. alcohols. Yeah, versions of cocktails or wines. Right, or you can not, buy yeah. non-alcoholic wine or even, non I mean, I, I, we have in our house non-alcoholic rum and non-alcoholic whiskey and non-alcoholic tequila. Yeah. Gail King, who doesn't drink at all, mm -hmm. we were having a little get-together and I made her a cocktail with non-alcoholic rum and I made for us uh, regular rum drinks and they tasted exactly the same. You, you tried both of them? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm, I mixed mix them. It. I mixed right, them right, up, right. right? And I gave one to Tony and Nate, and I gave Gail the, the um, virgin one, and we all sipped them, and they tasted exactly the same. Um, and so if yeah. people, doctor, can get the... My, what my wife enjoys is she actually enjoys the taste of alcohol. She doesn't drink to get drunk. She drinks because she <laughs> likes, like, oh, I added some bitters, and I added a little bit of, like, you know, yeah. Aperol to this cocktail to give it a little yeah. smoke. Like, isn't that a way to do it? That, and that's definitely a real key to that. And in terms of the planning is saying, what will you drink instead of what you would normally drink? If you go in there with no plan, you're much more likely to fail. If instead you try out those things and you try, you find the mocktail, so the alcohol-free version of your cocktail that has the same flavor but doesn't have the alcohol, then that makes it so much easier because you feel like you're still taking part in that activity. You're still enjoying drinking something, but it's just, you're just taking the alcohol out of it. So planning ahead and trying those different things is really useful. And things like the Dry January website are useful because people do share recipes and ideas for drinks that are there as well. Yeah, there's websites, there's there's apps. Um, I, what I like there about this... There are dry this, apps? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. to kind of help you. Um, what I really like about this idea is what you sort of brought up a little bit earlier, is that it gives you a little wiggle room so that it's not a failure if you had a drink. Because mm, sometimes that, you know, that, yeah. hey, if, if, you could, if you think you failed, then you're like, well, I might as well just go full. <laughs> and you throw everything out the window, right? All right. Um, so, and, and, and you can also start to feel really badly about yourself. Like, yeah. why can't I be more disciplined? And so I love that this yeah. is a more realistic approach to pursuing I mean, a healthier lifestyle. 
Yeah, so I was just I was just going to jump in and say, you know, the idea is that we, we don't expect everyone to go from no activity to running a marathon at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. If people can run three miles, 5K or something like that, that's great. That's an achievement. And not everyone wants to or can run a marathon. But if everyone can increase their physical activity, that's great. Not everyone can do a dry January. But if people can cut down their drinking by having a damp January, then they benefit. And we benefit more broadly socially as well because of the harm that alcohol can, can uh, cause. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. Uh, Richard DeVisa, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you.